So next we have what lies beneath. It's clear that the Davidians are more of a problem than we initially thought. We know they're in the neutral zone. Now we know that they're on Rosanna Station as well. And according to Zemara, there have always uh, already been deaths there. In addition, she indicated that the lower levels of the station were a trouble spot. Those levels aren't used as part of the club there, and they haven't been maintained for years. And the Ferengi are, of course, quite reticent to put any effort into any maintenance that isn't absolutely necessary. That means we don't really know what's down there. Zemara's code should get you access. Take a lift down and check it out. Previous Starfleet encounters with Davidians have indicated that they will create nests around the temporal portals they use, so keep an eye out for anomalies. If we find the portal, we'll know where and when the Davidians are feeding. Oh, and I expect it to be messy down there. Don't forget to take an emergency beacon. Mm -hmm. Teolic Pattern Enhancer. This is another device that will come in handy. Okay. Go to Drozana again. Let's see. When is the next ground ability unlocked? <coughs> Sorry about that. New ship at 20. That was what I was looking forward to. <clears throat> Seems like 24. Support drone. Those will be really handy. I think we have, you can have several of those active at the same time. And they're very useful support drones. That's one um, engineering officer ability I'm looking forward to. And at 34 we have Orbital Strike. That's another one, another ability that I'm really looking forward to. That should be a lot of fun to use. Okay, let's go to the Drozana system. one that big ship right there that kind of looks like it's some sort of a rock formation that's a Talshiar Borg adapted destroyer it's a pretty big ship and a pretty strong ship too pretty cool that right there is a KTN Aatrox carrier I don't know if it's a fleet version or not some cool ships hanging about here We have a, an ambassador. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We need to go downstairs. Oh, and here we are. We have the cover shield. Target self. 571.4 hit points. So it's very durable. Um, and enemies don't usually target it. It kind of just acts like... Um, an extra object in the way, extra cover, of course. Let's go to the maintenance levels with our team. Uh, the shield is much more uh, useful when you ha when you have something that doesn't fire to put behind it, like a shield generator or a medical generator, which some engineers do use as support for their teams. Sir, I'm reading temporal fluctuations and theolic energy in these levels of the station. Staying down here for too long could be hazardous. The interference also may be uh, may make it difficult to contact the, contact the ship or to get a transporter lock if we need an emergency beam out. Okay, we still have a fair few, little bit amount of time before the servers go down today. This level primarily contains power junctions and EPS conduits for the rooms above us. We need to reach the maintenance lift and take that down to the computer core. This one, I think it's a pretty long mission, honestly, and it might get messy. Take an emergency flashlight. Yeah, we probably should. 
I don't think you can even see anything on stream. This box of emergency supplies isn't just lying around. Baron probably bartered with a Nausicaan pirate for it. I recognize these flashlight drones. Hands-free hover system and programmed to shift in response to your movement. Not the most reliable design though. The flashlight is a device. Yada yada. Okay. Oh, wrong replacer. So we should probably have stuff set up like this. And we will put this here. And you don't need to be on the bar at all. There we go. Let's see if we can turn on the flashlights. Ooh, can we get more? No, we can't get more. I would have liked to maybe be able to equip my officers with some flashlights. Then we could have actually had some chance to see here. But as it stands, it's just going to be really dark. Um, DMFTW says, I bought a 20-sided dice today and it's just below average. When I rolled 100 times, most common roll is 17, average 10.38. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Uh, not necessarily pertaining to STO, but it's funny that... I do like D&D, &D, by the way, uh, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, Oh, Trilock Waves, there must be Davidians nearby. I expect that we will see more as we approach the area with the greatest concentration of theoric energy. Sir, I'm also picking up some indeterminate readings from behind the door to, your, to our left. However, the interference from the Trilock Waves are making, uh, are making hard to get accurate scans at a distance. Uh, should, uh, that's probably a little bit of an error in writing. Um, it's funny though because uh, a die is a die, like a uh, piece of dice is a piece of dice. Um, there are some variations that can happen because of the way the dice are built, but it's interesting that a lot of D&D nerds like myself and DMFTW uh, sometimes get a little bit superstitious about their dice. like. It's not actually about how the dice are built. It's because the dice are magic. So, for example, I watch a series called Roleplay Solemn, and uh, the DM there called uh, his name is Neil. He has some pink dice, some pink d20s, and he rolls those um, as his lucky kill the PCs dice. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, Back to StarTech Online. This Ferengi suffered from Taolic radiation poisoning. It seems that he's been here for a while, sir. Even if the Davidians couldn't use his neural energy, it's still dangerous to be too close to their nest. Hmm. Couldn't use his neural energy. Why wouldn't they be able to use the neural energy of a Ferengi? Be close to the nest. There's nothing we can do uh, for him now. Due to the temporal flux disruption, this, uh, disrupting the transporters, we can't even beam the body out. Once we get out of here, we can notify station security. Hmm. Why wouldn't they be able to use his neural energy, though, because he's a Ferengi? It's strange. Very strange. Um, speaking of dice... There were some. Uh, there was a Kickstarter a while back for some very sweet looking dice. I think it was called something like, You need these dice in your life. <laughs> uh, have you seen that one, DMFW? FTW? DM for the win. I just noticed that. Uh, check power distribution grid. They were very sweet, like uh, runes and stuff, and metal dice. Really nice. Um, Captain, it appears that the maintenance levels are suffering from intermittent power problems. The EPS conduits are probably overloaded due to the temporal fluctuations. This station's pretty old, sir, and many of these components are more than a century old. I'm seeing triolic uh, surges near the maintenance lift and across multiple levels, but nothing that can be consistently tracked. Mm-hmm. So I suppose, yeah, the... Um, 
The thing about metal dice is that the heavier the material, the more impact on the probability of certain rolls uh, it will have because of the way you have to carve symbols in some sides and that makes those sides lighter or heavier and that actually leads to real probability manipulation. Mm -hmm. Can't see shit! Usually when I play this level myself I don't even take the flashlight because it's just makes everything darker around. Okay, so this is probably the door we're gonna need to go through. I think this one is closed. Examine the door. Uh, looks like this door is stuck, sir. We'll have to find another way around. One of the side maintenance passages should have an alternative route. Yep. And we have spiders. This reminds me of Darkest Dungeon. Shit, they even actually have similar models, don't they? Cartellan Cave Spider. Look at that. Ouchies. Uh, engineering reroute coupling on stuck door. Uh oh, I actually can. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's see. Reroute cup hydraulic coupling. Sweet! I don't have to go through that side area. Uh oh. Though I will go through that side area because I need to make sure that there's nothing especially interesting. Oh, there's uh, some resources. I should do more scans here. Uh -huh. Might be some achievement stuff. I don't know where. Maybe in here. Oh, there's an old warp core, apparently. I don't know why a station would have a warp core. Maybe it's just... I'm too new at things. And that's just a power generator core of some description matter antimatter core okay Ugh, spiders <laughs> the best way to deal with spiders apparently is grenades at least that's what my officers think here hmm. Oh, surrounded. Okay, here you can have some explosives and a turret. Who knows? I'm being drained. Okay, it was a lot easier than I remembered it would be. Flashlight on. The Davidians are definitely getting more aggressive. They could have a lair somewhere in the lower levels. If they do, they'll become increasingly more violent as we get closer to their territory. <clears throat> the synchronic proton rifle should have a significant effect against the Davidians. The proton beam mode will be especially effective while the Davidians are phase shifted. Sadly, I don't have the rifle because I opted to get a warp core for our ship. Find the maintenance lift. Someone's put the lift on emergency lockdown. We'll have to override the lockdown code to access it. And of course, ambush. Trust me. So, we're gonna set down a turret. 
and we're gonna set down some mines and then we're gonna activate this thing come on this console discriminates against short people again there we go that should do it I wonder why someone would lock down the lift in the first place no ambush no ambush Wow okay Take the lift to the computer core. This isn't the computer core level. Sir, it appears that the lift is stuck. We're somewhere on a maintenance level for environmental controls and waste recycling. We'll need to track down the damaged junctions on this floor and repair or bypass them before we can take the lift to the computer core level. Okay. Let's see, emergency override door lock. And super dark level again, very nice. And by nice I mean not very nice at all. Captain, the door, we're locked in. Ah! Who knows? We are trapped. Let's see, we have a thing. Read maintenance log entry. Log entry supplemental. The strange power fluctuations aren't related to the problems in the power subsystems on the upper decks, so I'm looking into the possibility of feedback damage or system spikes in the environmental systems. It could take some time to find the problem and make repairs though, particularly if they need to use the replicators to create replacement components. Beran is loath to allow use of the replicators for anything more than blood wine and gramalian and sand peas. This is dirty, uncomfortable and thoroughly disagreeable work. Naturally, as soon as the job involves mucking around in a cycled atmosphere and waste processing, I get sh the short straw. So this guy is actually going to be a bad guy, uh, this dark figure. So that's why I'm reading it like that. Um, sadly the tricorder reading is not going to help us further because it's just going to default to this closest log. Let's see what's this way. More ambushes, absolutely, and of course. Okay, so mines. And turret. Let's see. Repair this relay. Hello! <laughs> Take that! Explosions! That was awesome. Okay, so. We have that log there, but there's more interesting story bits to find. Let's see if there's anything on this side of the room. Oh, there's a body. But I can't actually investigate it. Looks like a Starfleet officer. Looks like a female Trill Starfleet officer, if I'm not mistaken. But apparently I can't get any information out of that. See if there's anything upstairs. Nope, doesn't look like it. Time to jump, Geronimo! <laughs> and my officers actually jumped down as well. At least most of, most of them. Okay. Let's see. So. Let's go this way first and see what's going on. Actually, let's go... Oh, hello, is someone out there? Please, help me! That voice is coming from the communications console on the wall, Captain. Okay, use the console. Hello, is someone there? Who is this? Please, you have to help me! I came down here to check on one of the atmosphere regulators and someone shot me. Who shot you? I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't get a good look. He was uh, so fast. Please, you have to find a way to open this door and get me out of here. I am activating the manual override. Try to reach the release lever. 
Oh, prophets, no, he's back. He's no. And she's dead. Probably a Bajoran if she mentioned the prophets. Check the victim. Multiple phaser burns and con contusions, sir. This woman was murdered. The wounds are still warm. Ew! She was killed just a few seconds ago. There are no other exits or entrances in this room, and transporters are offline. How could she be killed if she was alone in a locker, in a locked room? Well, we're actually gonna find out. Let's see what this wall panel says. Oh, wait a minute, that's the actual objective. We need to find some evidence regarding the situation here. What is going on? Ah! Read maintenance log entry. Log entry supplemental. I've upgraded a few of the components on this level, including remote overrides for bleeds bleed valves on ex environmental controls, hollow emitters to expedite oh my god expedite further repairs and security overrides in case of emergency. I'm starting to suspect that the low level radiation I've detected on these decks has affected the station inhabitants and that some are showing signs of transient acute schizophrenia and paranoia. I have to maintain contact silence for now so that they don't interfere when I'm trying to repair the systems. Once I've corrected uh, the problems causing the radiation levels, we can deal with these symptoms. Um, spoilers, he's actually the schizophrenic one. Log entry, supplemental. My work will take far longer than I originally anticipated. Fortunately, I've engaged a safety interlock on the maintenance lift, so no one will come down here without me knowing about it. I found several program errors and have purged the affected subroutines. The work is much easier now. Soon everything will be under control. Yep, someone is going batshit insane here. Read out the relay. There's some Davidians there by the looks of it. Let's see if they ambush us before we engage the console or after we engage the console. First of all, let's do some mines. Uh oh! And actually, let me show you the cover shield. Ha! Huh. Now I can activate this console in peace. Actually, I can't activate this console because it's in combat and I locked myself in. <laughs> Whoops! Didn't count on that, it can't be activated during combat. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Chateau Picard. In a small hypo. So anyway, this is the cover shield. It's, it basically does what it says on the tin. It's a shield and you can, you can take cover behind it. There are no exit holes to shoot from, it just completely denies uh, one side from getting shot at. So you can use it to prevent flanking, for example, if you have enemies um, in front of you and to the side, you can just drop a cover shield to the side and then you can just shoot everyone uh, in the face and don't have to worry about ec the extra damage that you would take from being flanked, because this game has flanking um, implemented. Though sometimes you can actually lock yourself into places with a cover shield, sadly. And you can't force attack it. So you would have to wait for it to expire. Also, you can only have one. Yep. So you can just recast it and it will expire on its own. One minute cooldown by the looks of it. Anything to read in this room? Any logs? Doesn't look like it. Ah! 
I knew that was coming, but apparently I'm a scaredy cat. So let's run through here. Hopefully not get damaged by those plasma thingies. Let's see anything. This is also why I don't play uh, scary games. <laughs> I don't like to get scared. I don't actually. I don't even watch horror movies. Now I'm gonna drop some some mines here because I think that the psycho will be coming through here at some point from having played this mission before. Yes, I got that scared even though I played this mission before. So we're gonna drop a turret as well to defend ourselves, of course, and another set of mines, maybe around here. Hopefully this will cut off his escape. Okay, nothing here. This is the last relay. Look for the encryption key. Hmm. Uh oh. Game. He just vanished. Yep. And we're about to find out how he just vanished. a bit annoying when combat starts during dialogue but there's nothing I can really do about that now is there oh actually I could just drop a cover shield ha now we have a little bit of cover though it kind of looks like my uh, bridge officers weren't aware that the fa that that is actually covered and were trying to shoot through it. I'll have to see if that's actually a problem or if it was just um, a false impression. Mm -hmm. Some rare pistols. That was nice. Where is the enemy, though? I know he's around here somewhere, and we haven't gotten him. Maybe he's up there. Let's see. This is the body we can't investigate. What the hell is everyone doing in... Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> bugs. Great, fan-fucking-tastic. Let's see if we can damage him with some mines or something. Our bridge officer also tried. So we just need to wait for the arm, arming sequence. 
Oh, fuck me. If I have to do this all over again, I'm gonna be very upset. But again, Startek Online is full of bugs. There's nothing I can really do about it. I don't have any weapons that go through obstacles. Let's see if we can just order our officers away from there, first of all. Okay. Maybe... The turret is kind of shooting him, maybe, sort of. Let's see if we can order our officers away and maybe the uh, offending AI will just move with them or something. We'll try to move after them and find a way to move after them. Nope, doesn't look like it. But he is doing damage somehow. <sighs> First. A malfunctioning hologram, no wonder. The triolic energy would have uh, degraded his program and caused instability. And the Davidians didn't bother it, because it had no neural energy for them to uh, feed upon. Sir, it looks like the encryption key for the door might correspond to a subroutine embedded in the hologram's mobile emitter. We should be able to use it to open the door. Mobile emitters are still rare outside of Starfleet, Captain. The staff here must have spent quite a lot of latinum to obtain one. If you ask me, Belan might be selling more than drinks and double. It would be best if someone keeps an eye on him, but I have a feeling Franklin Drake is, going, uh, is doing just that. So, uh, Mr. Crazy Psycho was actually a hologram who was using a mobile emitter and got corrupted by all the radiation going around here. Thankfully we managed to progress. I don't know what happened to that uh, Davidian that was caught there. Probably he tried to move and detonated all of the mines at once. Uh, and, and let's actually check the chat. Yeah, I think someone killed him. Combat deals yeah your current on mine burial deals damage so he walked into the mines okay I think that's about it for this level let's try and get to the next one take the maintenance lift this is it we've made it to the computer core level on this station, the core itself is down a long ramp area, <laughs> past some regulator rooms. We should head there as quickly as possible. Of course, a long ramp area. Why not just a lift? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Investigate things. Funnily enough, I'm actually getting a lot better use out of this flashlight as being a, a very short character uh, because the light is reflecting off the ground a lot more <laughs> and if I were a tall character it would just reflect off the objects in the distance and that would, for example here, that would be no use whatsoever but now I can actually see the ground, something useful. Interesting. Sometimes there are benefits to being short. Okay, uh, so there is something down there for us. Uh, nothing here to discover, I don't think. Nope, Tricorder says there's nothing in this room. Though it may be wrong, of course. There are hidden things, hidden accolades. Examine the door. Another locked door. This one doesn't seem to have any special codes. We should be able to open it from the secondary security console just down the hallway. Uh, okay, so back we go. Let's put the cover shield here so we don't confuse it with a heel. And we have the console. I think it's up there. Yep. 
let's drop some mines. And the turret. Probably going to get ambushed. And a cover shield facing this way. Ha! You're trapped. Can't get around, can you? <laughs> Sucker. Oh, he floated over some consoles. It floated over some consoles. But it did, the cover shield did buy us some time. We managed to take care of the Davidians that were coming from this area before the ones coming from this area could actually do anything to us. So that was a good use of the cover shield in my opinion. That should do it. We need to, to double back to the secure door that we saw earlier in the hallway. Okay, medium hypo. Geronimo. I need some goblin rocket boots. <laughs> there are some ice boots, but no rocket boots, sadly. Through this doorway and down the ramp. Down we go. Ooh, there's something here. Uh oh. There are two exits from this room, both along the same wall. To head toward the core, we need to take a southernmost door on the east wall. Follow the. Uh, follow the hallway, then turn left and go down the ramp. Now, the funny thing is, I have two chat windows. One is general chat, and one is only NPC chat. Usually, NPC chat shows in the NPC chat window, but now it doesn't. Uh, STO is so quirky, probably because a lot of different generations of uh, programmers have worked on it throughout the years that it has been active. Some of it is well optimized, some of it is not well optimized. Some of it, some of the quests are made in a specific kind of way. Some are not made in a specific kind of way. And there's something here. Tricoder says that there is something here. This body. Oh, examine the body. Sir, this person is from the 23rd century. The Davidians must be bringing their victims through time. We have to stop them before they are responsible for any other deaths. This, they could disrupt the timeline. Hmm. There's something else really far down below. Uh-oh. Luckily, these guys don't end up attacking. Though they would have had a very nice amount of mines to deal with. Also, there was a really weird bug here with this grate. <laughs> it keeps making my character try to hop. Silly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like there is something outside of... No, it's on the room at the lower segment. Let's see what's down here. More Davidians? Looks like. Have some mines. And explosions. <laughs> nice. Vaporized. Uh oh, we're surrounded. Very good. So, I think there was something interesting in this room, wasn't there? Oh no, just some resources. There. What's this? Tritonium gas? Hmm. Oh, need the flashlight. This appears to be a regulator room for the computer core's power system. The Davidians are probably re leeching power from the station to keep their gate active. We could use this console to set up a power spike that we could trigger near the computer core. 
which might disrupt the Davidians and their gate. Very good. I'm going to turn on the flashlight again. Uh oh. Let's set up a cover shield just in case we someone tries to flank us again. Okay. Let's see. Take items. Looks like we have another red shirt on the ground. This time is a lady. Uh, two. The computer core is located at the very bottom of this level. To reach it, we'll need to double back to the door we unlock. Oh, uh, that's uh, an old message. A very old message. Ugh. Stuck on grates again. Grates. Great, great. can go around the cover shield. And down the stairs. Let's see. This looks like a field control station for the lower levels of the station. We could set up the field systems here so that we can activate them in the computer core area to counteract the Davidian's phasing abilities. That would push them out of sync with our universe. So, stacking the odds as much as possible in our favor. Probably going to get ambushed at this place as well though. So let's drop a turret and some mines. Yep. Eh, the mines did not detonate on the spiders. Well, that's annoying. Yes, yeah, still we managed to take care of them pretty fast. Let's see. Nothing on the tricorder nearby. Yep, the Vidians. And this is going to be a little bit tricky, I think. So I'm going to keep my dudes here and do deads as well. Maybe just a little bit more forward. And I'm gonna move Uzimat here so he can. Oh shit! Moved everyone by mistake. Move everyone back. Drop some mines of my own. And then I'm gonna try and bait the Davidians through this door and into the giant minefield I just set up. Need to just move my troops so they are facing the right way and don't take massive flanking damage. Okay, come on! Ha! <laughs> right into the minefield. Uh-oh! AoE attack! Not good! Not good, not good, not good, not good. Luckily the mines are holding up pretty good. Come on, blow this guy out of the sky. <laughs> because he's floating. Ah, okay. Almost got him. 4k HP. Like, this is definitely a boss type dude. And rare stuff. Nice. And a triple, which I need to equip on someone before it starts eating. Let's give it to Miss Flores. Should be clear. Whew. 
Sir, the Davidians' time portal heads back to the 23rd century. There is no telling how much trouble the Davidians may be causing in the past, but the technology to detect them just doesn't exist. Once we get readings on the portal, we should take them back to Deep Space K7. Their computing facilities are far, from, far more extensive than what we have on the Grotius, and they might be able to find a way to shut down the portal. Continue. Lots of sadly dead people here. Lots of red shirts. And blue shirts, apparently. They don't discriminate. That might be trouble. We are going against tradition. Scan the Davidian portal. The distortion from the portal is intense here, and it's difficult to process all of this information. We should at least be able to comp compensate enough to beam out, though. We need to take this information back to the nearest starbase, K7, for analysis. Their computers are powerful enough to process it. Okay, nothing else to find, so we can beam out. Hmm. I guess I missed the accolade for this mission, but it's not that important. Go to Deep Space K7. I think we might actually have to call it a day after this. There's only 45 minutes until the servers shut down for maintenance. I don't think we'll be able to do the next mission <coughs> in 45 minutes. Depends on what it is. Let's see. So we are on what lies beneath. Everything old is new. Follow the mystery back to a place where everything is familiar, but nothing is the same. Hmm. I think that might take a while, yeah. And I don't think that 45 minutes would be enough. The USS Grotius. <laughs> Okay, let's talk to talk to some scientists. The size of ships in this game varies wildly, I will say also. Like that dreadnought that just flew away, I think you could catch a glimpse of just how big it was compared to our ship. And that's kind of interesting. The statistics don't really want vary that much, though, so that's maybe a little bit immersion breaking. Because that dreadnought should definitely be able to wipe the floor with us, but uh, under correct circumstances, still would have a shot against it. Hmm. Use the K7 computers to analyze scan data. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So don't fall for this. It will cost you 500 energy credits to transfer to Eta Eridani sector block. This will actually transfer you into space, probably. So now I need to. Fuck. I need to go to the research level, which, if I wouldn't have gone there before, I wouldn't know how to get there. Take the turbo lift and what? It isn't here? So where the hell are the computers that I'm supposed to be using? 
fudge. The map says they are right there. But that was a bar when I went there, wasn't it? Let's see. Or a lounge area, rather. Okay, so... Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's actually next to the... <laughs> yeah, my God. It's not in the actual area. Um... We have Kenzie Calhoun, Analyze Scan Data. Preliminary Analysis. Temporal incursion consistent with Davidian Time Portal technology. Approximate linked date. Star date 2715.6. Earth Standard Year 2265. Davidian Portal based on phase shifted tachyon spin supported by draw from the Zana Station power supply. Can the portal be safely closed or used? Portal suffers from instability due to quantum particle entanglement with phase shifted particles. Portal can be enlarged or accessed with modulated directed energy when phase shifted entang uh, when phase shifted entangled matter reaches critical point. Sir, this means that the triolic energy surges peak. What? Uh, we when? Oh, that when the Thyrolex energy surges peak, we could remodulate an energy weapon, even a hand phaser, to use the portal and travel back in time. We could stop the Davidians at the source. Cool. Okay, and let's turn this in. What lies beneath? Now that we know that the Davidians have a portal to the past, and approximately where they are focusing their attention, I see no other choice than to send you and your crew back there to stop them before they kill again. I'll be honest, Grimo, time travel is a tool. At times, it is a very useful one. I know Starfleet has hundreds of regulations about temporal incursions, but my job is to preserve the Federation, not make Admiral Quinn and the rest of the suits at Starfleet Command happy. If we break a few rules along the way, so be it. I need to make some preparations before you can proceed. I will contact you when the time is right. Drake out. And we get the Triolic Pattern Enhancer, which is a ground device. Lieutenant Commander. Whoa! That's a lot of R&D holograms. So let's actually take a look at R&D uh, in this segment, after I equip this Triolic thingamajigger. Um, Yep, let's equip the triolic thing thing uh, majigger. It is kind of similar to the cover shield that I, I think I can actually show you in this area. We'll see. Close that, close this, close this. Not right now, thank you. Or maybe they banned it because it kind of affects people's vision. It affects graphics. So this would drop um, an area that is cordoned off by some um, glowing probe spikes. And if you are in the area, you gain the damage resistance and the proton negative damage resistance. Uh, the proton debuff. It's kind of useful. Um, I think it levels up with you, so the damage resistance should get better later on. Okay, now, regarding R&D. Oh, and we have a new officer. Let's see, who do we get? We can get a Rigelian Engineering Officer candidate. Spirit Walk, heal and resist damage, aggressive, increase damage and threat regeneration. Oh, generation. Protection from knockback and root or plus healing and plus damage from kit powers. Or we have a Bajoran with lucky basic covert creative and spiritual. And a human tactical officer with space leadership, subsystem repair and hull regen rates. Um, I think we already have some humans in space, don't we? We have Elisa Flores. She has leadership. Superior teamwork. Coles, Tavrel, and Uzimat. So what kind of officers would we really need? We might need some more tactical officers. 
or some more science officers. I don't have enough science officers. Spiritual. Bonus healing plus health regeneration. Yeah, this this sounds okay. So um, Cadet Kren, it is probably not going to commission him right now, but that's it. So let's take a look at R and D. We just got our um, officers for our duty officers for R and D. And by the way, we should check how many officers do we have. We have only thirty-seven duty officers. That's pretty weak. Um, so this is the R&D screen. We have only one open slot to do R&D in at the moment. Uh, we get other slots as you see here. Raise school to level 2, raise any school to level 4, um, raise at least 3 schools to level 5, and the last one at level 15 in any school. And what we can do here is research stuff that will help us either build or improve uh, weapons and other gear. So beams helps with um, starship beam technology we have cannons helps with star starship cannon technology engineering this has a wide variety of uses i think you can actually build consoles uh, engines uh, warp cores and armor so this is a very useful one if i'm not terribly mistaken ground weapons of course all ground weapons uh, projectiles this has to do with torpedoes and maybe mines. Looks like you can also build relevant consoles for... Oh, okay, so... I see, so if you can build a specific weapon type, you can also build the consoles that affect that specific weapon type. So engineering can only build consoles like engineering consoles. I see, I see. Okay. Projectile science is shields, deflectors, and science consoles, by the looks of it. Also, have we also have the event stuff right here, combining omega particles that we could find for the event that the anniversary event that is going on. Uh, okay, and we have shields that works for starship shields and uh, personal shields. So. And officer training is... Uh, you can make manuals here that will train your officers in skills, in different skills that you don't have, which is kind of useful. And because of the way the system works now, they will remember the fact that they know these skills and you can just slot them in or out later after you teach them with the manuals, which is very nice. Now, I think engineering would be a good place to start. We can queue up this project right here, which gives us a lot of EXP, but no, no actual um, um, product. So this is just for leveling up my skill. And I will queue it up, and that should be it. Okay, otherwise, I think we're gonna call it a day for Star Trek Online because of um, uh, because of the server maintenance that's happening soon. Let's see if we can equip anyone with better armor first. Hmm, critical severity. Oh, nice. Coles and Uzimat. Okay, so I think that's about it for now. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, next Star Trek Online will probably next week either Monday or Tuesday. Keep an eye on Twitter because tomorrow I will be doing some other videos. Uh, Saturday will probably be Endless Legend Day and Sunday is Heroes of Mighty Magic Day. So thanks everyone for watching and see you soon.